and welcome to the eighth episode of the Knitting With You podcast. I'm Frida and I'll be your host. If you're a new viewer, welcome. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Um, if you have watched this before, you may notice that the sound is different. Um, hopefully it's better and hopefully it's very much better than the last episode. I used my headset from my iPhone and the sound was just terrible. I had no idea it was that bad so I'm really sorry for you guys who had to listen to that. Uh, it was this chick 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 noise all the time um, as soon as I touched the cord even a little so yeah sorry this time I have a new microphone this is a real fancy microphone that my boyfriend bought me for my birthday I turned 29 on the 4th of April and he bought me this so this is the laser professional laser professional on camera microphone from SE Electronics. So it looks like this. And it's called the Pro Mic Laser. And yeah. I haven't tried it yet. This is my first try. I had a small sound test where I had it mounted on um, my video camera on top of it and yeah that was not a good idea because it picked up on um, some humming noise that my camera apparently does while it's uh, recording. So yeah. Now I have it <laughs> mounted on a box beside it with some fancy schmancy tape <laughs> so hopefully this works better um, if it doesn't I'll try to make it better till the next episode but hopefully it doesn't make strange noises like the last episode and the awful headset so enough about that um, so since last time I have been knitting some and uh, I finished my mother's Daydream Believer cardigan in Nerd Girl Yarns Saucy. This is a BFL and silk mix and this colorway is Don't Blink. So this is how it looks. It's this lovely light grey with some... it's a semi-solid sort of. So it has some darker and some lighter spots which it, it makes it really really lovely to knit. And uh, I really love this base too because it, it feels sturdy but it's not um, it's very soft and it has a lovely drape. But the BFL and silk blend yeah it's amazing. It's not bouncy at all. It's uh, it's not stiff like cotton but yeah it's more like cotton than a bouncy merino. So uh, I think this is lovely for uh, garments that are not too tightly knitted. I think you need to have a fairly loose gauge and I think it's amazing for shawls or cowls that's a bit more drapey or anything like that and uh, the cardigan itself I have already gifted but I took some pictures it was a really bad day to take pictures and my mother just would not let me uh, take any pictures of her wearing the cardigan she's a bit camera shy so yeah but I tried to find somewhere to take some pictures of it and um, I'm not a photographer. They are not pretty but they are here. Uh, 
and as you saw this is how it looks in the pattern I did not uh, put that many buttons in it in fact I didn't use buttons at all um, we decided to use um, hooks and eyelets that I put on the inside of it I also hand sew on some ribbon on the inside it was a white really really pretty pretty ribbon with some I think it was like small roses in it and I think it was satin and yeah it was really nice and I believe I had I took some pictures of the ribbon too so if I have one you will see one here and hopefully you saw one um, the back side of this cardigan has this lovely color which is almost like a shawl and yeah all in all it was a nice pattern it was not hard to knit um, I used some modifications from Amy Herzog's um, Knit to Flatter uh, series on the class on Craftsy. I really really liked that class and yeah next time I make some kind of sweater or cardigan or anything like that that I really want to fit I will use it because yeah it's a really really good class so if you are interested in knowing more about how you sorry I have to check my mic yeah I guess it's okay um, it had slid down a bit in the shape <laughs> hold so I hope it still sounds good and that it didn't slide down while you had to hear it because I imagine that would have been terrible and yeah I'll just have to check that in the editing later um, yeah Amy Herzog makes this amazing class and I if you haven't heard of Knit to Flatter you really have missed something and you should go check it out I know there is a book also and she also has this service online where you can tape in, type in your measurements and you get a pattern that is made to fit you and your gauge so I believe you can use almost any yarn and any size needles you just need to see knit a gauge swatch that you like and then you use those measurements and yeah um, I'm losing track <laughs> let's um, open my notes again <laughs> so back on track that's my whip no, that's my F.O. <laughs> finished object. Now it's time for my whip and apparently for my cell phone to make some weird noises. Um, I'm working on a pattern called Chevron Top. I don't remember if I have shown you this and as usual I have to make some last minute folding so you don't see the rest of the pattern something like this and this picture is not great I have a better picture of it on my Instagram and yeah Go to my Instagram and check it out. But it looks like this. So it's a quite sheer top, knit in lace weight, 
where the top of it is in um, the garter stitch and the bottom part is in stockinette with this um, you do it's shorter in the front and longer at the side so it goes like a chevron pattern um, this pattern has two versions one short and one long so I'll make some noise and show you the short one too and I'm making the long one so I you have these shoulder patches or what you should call them I wonder what she calls them in the pattern herringbone shoulders she calls them and I guess that's fitting because it's a herringbone pattern so I made mine pink because who doesn't love pink and first I made some of these shoulder patches in some sock yarn like this this was a paint in it I don't know how many of these I've actually made and ripped out and start over and it was just awful and it really shouldn't be because it's not hard um, herringbone pattern it looks quite hard but it really isn't if you can knit two together you can probably do the herringbone stitch but somehow it just didn't work for me and when I was finished I realized that this was way too big I mean if you compare it wow, without losing it hopefully this and this now it's curling up but you can still see that this is way too big so I just had to throw away that idea of having these really neon neon hot pink shoulders because uh, I really tried to find an equally neony hot pink lace yarn but I just couldn't find one that didn't cost a lot of money or would take several weeks to get here or yeah I mean I wanted to start knitting now so I went to my LIS LYS local yarn shop and they have this amazing 100% cashmere lace yarn that I have been so in love with for months but I just couldn't find a reason to pay that much for such a small amount of yarn because I thought that it was if I would use it I would want to make a shawl and then it takes more than one skein but I went into my yarn shop I looked around for some hot pink lace and the only almost hot pink lace they had was this cashmere. So this is from Yepard. Sorry, my phone. I have to shake it. Sorry. Okay, so my sister is on her way home, so there will probably be a cut in this if I don't finish in time. Um, well, this is Cashmere Lace from Yepard, and their website is .dk, so I'm guessing it's a Danish um, 
company. So this is 100% pure cashmere and it's 25 grams which is about 350 meters so I'm guessing that's almost 400 yards maybe 375 I don't know I really can't um, calculate that in my head but I know that yards are always more than meters so some of it is in Danish but yeah I don't really remember how much I paid for this and I guess that's a good thing but as you have seen it is this lovely pink and the rest of the body as you may tell I have gotten quite far on it um, the rest of this is in Tricotri and her merino lace this is the superwash one and the colorway is this um, like ombre gradient yeah gradient was the word I was looking for that is from this creamy white to a lighter grey and darker and darker and darker until it gets black like this and the colorway is winter is coming so as I talked about last time I wanted to have a project to knit on while I while I watched Game of Thrones and as you may guess I have <laughs> knitted a bit more on this than just during the episodes but it's a really really great pattern for gradients and it's a great pattern for TV knitting because the only stitches you have to think of is these side, sti side stitches where you have these holes which I think is a really nice detail and then of course this part in the center front and center back which gives this chevron look yeah you can see how it falls like it's higher in the middle and lower at the sides and this looks really really tiny but it will block out I'm actually not sure what size I'm making I don't have it in my head but I'm sure it will be good and that's actually everything that I'm really knitting on I'm still working on those baby cardigans for my friends baby girls but yeah I kind of loved making this chevron top so much that I kind of left them hanging <laughs> so oopsie um, I have no spinning but I have some amazing news this will be so much fun me and Emma from the chubby pug yarn podcast are hosting a cal together this will be a knit along, knit -along of the Hitofude. Hitofude? Hitofude? You know, that amazing Japanese cardigan that, you know, everyone and their aunt is knitting. Everyone makes it and it's such a lovely, lovely pattern. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I wonder which rock you have been living under the last few months. But I will show you the picture and probably you will recognize it. This amazing cardigan that is made in one piece of yarn from top to bottom. You don't cut the yarn and that's why, it call, why it's called Hitofude. Because that is a Japanese art form where you draw a dragon's head. And then you have a special brush that you dip in this 
ink or watercolor or whatever it is and then you make the body of the dragon this snake-like long body with one long brush stroke and they have this amazing technique where they almost like wiggle the brush which make it looks like the dragon has scales and I think they dip the brush in more than one color at the time so yeah it's really amazing and you really should google Hitofude because you will see these awesome pictures and I think I'll I'll link to um, a YouTube video where you can see them drawn because you really should. They are amazing. Can I see? Can I say amazing one more time? Amazing. Yes, I could. And we will have this niche long because Emma said in her podcast that she wanted to knit this and. I had been thinking of making it, but I wasn't really sure. But when I heard that she wanted to have a cow, and then I went to look at it again, and I realized that, yeah, I really, really want this cardigan. So I asked her if she wanted to have a cow together, and she said yes. So we will have this together, and we will start the 1st of June, so you will have a month from now to get your stuff together, pick up some lovely lovely yarn and maybe make some... Um, you know that word for this little tri-square that you make? I really can't make up... I can't find the word. So I know I've already said it once, so I just put it here instead. It's this word I'm looking for. Uh, anyway, you will need some fingering weight yarn. And this goes from a bust size of 73 to 84 inches up to 133 to 144 inches. So from extra small to extra extra large. So no, that's not inches, it's centimeters. Let's try that again, shall we? It goes from 73 to 84 centimeters up to 133 to 144 centimeters and that equals 28 to 32 inches for the extra small up to 50 and a half up to 54 point 54 and a quarter inches for the extra extra large so I would say that this pattern is quite generously sized and most people should be able to find a size that fits them. And you need somewhere between 660 meters up to 1390 meters of fingering weight yarn. And in yards, that is 730 yards for the smallest size and 1530 yards for the largest size. And some US size 4 circular, circular needles. And some stitch markers and a crochet hook. Don't be afraid of the crochet hook, it's really nothing hard. And this pattern is also very cheap. Here comes my family, so I'll pause here and we're back and you will probably hear them in the background but I hope it won't be too bothering. I think I was saying that this pattern isn't um, very expensive. Of course I can't remember how much it was but I think it maybe was two or three dollars so it's not much at all. and. The info that I'm showing here is just like how many yards of uh, yarn you need and 
anything. So if you're interested, I'm I would recommend that you pause the video the video here and read this to see what you need and then go out and buy the pattern on Ravelry and search your stash for some lovely fingering weight or buy some new because who doesn't want new yarn? I have already picked out what yarn I will be using and I will be using this black and purple yarn from Tricotri and this is her Sock Merino Tencel in the Maleficent colorway and I have more than one skein. Um, so this is 50% Superwash Merino and 50% Tencel. So it has this really lovely, lovely drape. As you can see when I'm holding the skein up, it just drops down. So yeah, I think that this will make a really lovely drapey cardigan. And I love black and I love purple, so it really couldn't be better. And as I said, it starts June 1st, so you have a month to prepare and uh, finish what you already have on your needles or anything else that you want. And we still have some details to um, finish, but there will be a finished object thread and it will be a chat thread. thread. Um, on Ravelry and we will also have an uh, Instagram hashtag and that will be chubby you cal so chubby and you spelled e w e w e uh, k a l and yeah Sorry, my computer decided to go to sleep. And we will also have prices. There will be some way, sometime about halfway through the cow, we will make a drawing from the shatter thread. And um, that price will be random and like the winner will be drawn at random and the prize will be something a bit smaller um, and we have decided that since this cardigan is from Japan all the prizes will be Japan themed and of course also knitting and fiber and yarn related so there will be a small prize in the shatter thread um, that will be Japanese, Japan related. And then when the cal is, is finished, we will have a larger prize that also will be drawn at random from the finished objects thread. And you have to be a member of both my group and her group on Ravelry. And that's Chubby Pug Yarn Podcast for Emma's group and Knitting With You podcast for my group. So yeah, you have to be a member of both groups to be able to win. And you have to finish your cardigan. You have to start it um, no earlier than the 1st of June. And you have to finish it at the latest at the last of August. So you have June, July and August to finish it. It's three months and as I've understood it, this cardigan doesn't take a lot of time to make. So there will still be time to, for you to have some other vacation knitting and yeah. And as I said, there will be a larger prize that we will draw from the finished objects thread. And I still have to pick out the details, but there will be a project bag. There will probably be some kind of stitch markers or uh, notions. And there will be some yarn. 
and all of this will be Japan related in some way. So yeah, come join us because it will be awesome and I'm sure there will be a lot of lovely people that either want to make another Hitofude because they already have made one and love it because that seems to be the case. Many of those who make it seem to make another one because they love it so much and they want it in different colors and different yarns and all, all that jazz. And um, Sorry, I lost my train of thoughts because I heard my sister talking and um, yeah if you have made one before you are very welcome to join us if you have never made one before you are still very very welcome to join us and yeah come chat with us I'm sure that the shatter tread will get up quite soon so all of us that are planning to join can get to know each other a bit and show what yarns we are using and yeah you know and if you have some ideas of lovely lovely Japanese themed things that you think would be a great price well it's still open for uh, suggestions so please give me some suggestions and Emma too of course and I'm I know that Emma will talk about this in her next podcast episode too, so go check her out. As I said, she is Chubby Pug Yarn and she's available on YouTube. Um, I haven't done any shopping since the last time, except for the lovely cashmere lace. So that's it for this show. Come and join us on Ravelry, come and join the Knit Along and also come join us on Instagram. I'm knitting with you there too and Emma is called Distortion. So you should really follow her too. And we're back just to say goodbye. <laughs> if you like this episode, please rate the podcast on iTunes or give it a thumbs up on YouTube. Happy knitting and spinning. Bye.